Coming up in this FinCast, a look at the super rare freshwater frogfish. Oh, I see better color, I see more activity, my fish breed. I have a full line pet store. I have fish tanks where I have epistogrammas breeding. I have fry. I have lots of fun stuff going on. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. And today, uh, once again, I'm at the Global Expo in Orlando, Florida for 2017. And I've been traveling around, Every, everywhere around me is everything that has to do with aquariums and aquarium sales and aquarium fish in the United States and even internationally today. And this is where uh, the retailers come and they meet with the wholesalers and people will do business here that, that will sometimes last their stores for an entire year. Of course, I take advantage of it because this is where everybody with any knowledge of fish exists. And, and in the aquatic lounge, which is just off to my left right here, uh, there are fish that you just will never see see in your average fish store because they're so rare, they're so interesting, they're so unique, but all the fish vendors bring them here because they want to show how high quality their wares are and they want to show that they can that they can bring in these unique fish and I take this opportunity uh, to talk to some of these people to learn a little bit more about uh, these various fish, stuff that I don't know, these are fish in most cases that I've never kept. So one of the fish I want to talk about is something I didn't actually even know existed which is a freshwater frogfish. You've seen these fish in salt water and they're they're a curiosity even in salt water but people have come to know that they exist but this is a freshwater frogfish and it sits there and it looks like a like a rock and then the fish swims by and it grabs it and it'll swallow just about anything uh, that it can get its mouth around but it actually has feet uh, the thing that's unusual about it is that this is a freshwater one now this this one that I've seen here at the show is brown it's not particularly beautiful uh, but uh, I did talk with the folks from Seagrist Farms, and they gave me some great information about it. It shares all the common characteristics of a marine frog with the hand-like fins. They walk around. They're ambush predators. Uh, they have an angler-type extension on their head. So it's, it's truly a freshwater frogfish. I, it, it baffled me. Uh, the first time I was offered these fish about a year ago, uh, I was offered a freshwater frogfish. And we've, had, we've received fish from the Batrachis genus before that are really not truly a freshwater water fish that are really more uh, brackish to marine. So I was expecting something along those lines, but what we received is really more of an angler type frog fish, and that's uh, Antonaris bioocelotus. I think that's I think that's the scientific on it. Uh, I think they're probably bringing them in from Vietnam. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but it's 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 somewhere from Southeast Asia for sure. I think what I've noticed with these guys is they seem to share that same common trait with their marine counterparts where if they spend enough time on a plant or a rock of a certain color, they tend to take on the color of that of that rock. So in some ways when you see the marine their marine counterparts come in if they spend a lot of time on a sponge, they may be very red or very orange and they tend to color, sh color phase or color shift back to other colors as, uh, as their environment changes. So at certain times of the year, they seem to come in really red or orange or yellow. This time of the year, they're coming in more brown. They may be doing that to match the consistency, the water quality, the color of the water for a number of reasons, but they do seem to have some of that, some of that uh, ability to change color, just like the marine frogfish do. Actually, you know, I thought the price was going to be astronomical, uh, but really they're not. I think you could probably walk into a pet store and get one of these guys for $100 or $150. I, that may sound a little expensive, but this is probably going to be one of those pets that he'll be the only fish in your tank. And for those that like to post pictures online or talk with people, this is a conversation starter all day. You could post a picture of a freshwater frog fish in a forum, and I guarantee you people are going to be posting, where did you get that? What kind of fish is it? How do you keep it? How do you care for it? So for me, I consider myself a fish geek. I have a lot to learn and a long ways to go, but this was a first for me when we got this in. I did not even know anything like this existed. We keep them at Seagrass in our, in our saltiest system, uh, and that was because when I was first offered them, I had, I had a lot of disbelief that I was truly going to receive a freshwater frogfish. So we chose a location in the freshwater building that had a pretty high salinity, salinity level as, as it was. And that's also a very alkaline, again, very hard system that I put them in. And they've done great. And there have been times where they'll be in-house in for three months or so and we have no problems at all with them. We've shipped them out to customers who have kept them just in plain tap water, neutral pH, relatively alkaline, 
still no problems with them. So I think their ability, and again, this is probably a fish that experiences a lot of different water parameters in the wild just based upon where they live and their environment, they seem pretty adaptable. So as long as you get a healthy fish to begin with, I think they'll adapt to pretty much almost, almost any water conditions you put them in, with the exception of going too extreme in one way or the other. They're definitely going to be one of those fish, again, that are probably only going to take live initially. You may be able to get them onto frozen prepared foods and things like that. I don't think you'll ever see this guy take a pellet. Um, but yeah, anything that wiggles around or moves that they think they can fit in their mouth or even they can't fit but they might think they can fit, they're going to try and eat. If they're not pelagic. They don't move around much. Uh, and from what I've been able to read, they don't seem to get too, too large. So I think uh, a, a starter tank for, the, for one of these guys, a 10-gallon, would be great. That being said, there's not a whole lot of solid information out there on these. So... As, as a recommendation, I would say keep an eye on it. If they do seem to be outgrowing their aquarium, it may be time to get a bigger one. But as a rule of thumb, frogs don't need huge, huge tanks because they don't move around a ton. So there's a look at the freshwater frogfish, and I just think it's a really, really cool fish. And it's something that not everybody thinks about, but that might be something fun to have in your aquarium. Certainly uh, uh, is a conversation starter. I appreciate you watching. Please uh, look me up. Just search for Fincasters on Facebook or on Instagram and, and check it out. And uh, if I can, I'll follow you back. The more fish you have on your Instagram account, the more likely you are to get a follow back from me. But check it out at any rate. I do appreciate it. That's all for this time. I'll see you in the next FinCast.